Can we please stand for the reading of the gospel? Today the gospel is coming from John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and robber. But he that enters in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter opens, and the sheep hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by his name, and leads them out. And when he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follows him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable Jesus spoke unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spoke unto them. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. And I'm now going to pick up from verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the father knows me, even so, I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them I must also bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore does my Father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us pray. O gracious God, Heavenly Father, thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Lord, I give you thanks for this day and for the opportunity to declare your word. The word that you have purpose, the word that your word declares is true and forever settled in heaven. I stand here today, Lord, just asking that you speak through me, that you draw me back and that you increase and deliver your word through my feeble lips. Lord, I know that your word is so precious, and I would be careful to handle it in a way that brings honor and glory to your name. And so as you speak through me today, Lord, I pray for the hearers, that the hearts and the ears would be open to receive, thus said the Lord, and that our lives would be ordered and changed and redirected, Lord, in a way that is upward and forever pleasing you, because we have become enriched. We have become to a higher level because you have spoken. So Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will now be acceptable in your sight. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I read from verse 1. I believe because I have had that in my heart during the week as I was preparing the word. I'm actually including in my text verses 1 right through to verse 18. 
And so I wish to give God a high note of praise that on this fourth Sunday of Easter, we have the joy and privilege of looking into his word and what is revealed to us in these powerful verses that we have heard today. I struggled for a proper title for this message, and in the absence of coming up with one of my own, I will use the heading in the Bible. I am the door, I am the good shepherd, and the rejected stone. And in these titles, I will be looking at John chapter 10, verses 1 through 18, and Acts, verses 11 and 12, and fusing them together along with Psalm 23, to lift our Savior up as the good shepherd, the door, and the rejected stone. John 10 is a powerful chapter. In it, we see some very important I am statements by Christ. And these statements, while lifting up Jesus as supreme, he epitomizes the door, the good shepherd, and one who has all authority over his life, in life and in death. And these statements also include us as humble beneficiaries of his goodness and his salvation. We are the sheep. Psalm 95 verse 7 describes us as the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. The Apostle John gives us insight into the heart of the one who came to save us. There is no doubt in these verses that our salvation is in view. In verses 1 through 10, Jesus describes himself to be the door. And he was saying this to those who pretended to seek for righteousness. He said it to the Jews who thought that they were the only sheep. And they thought this way because they were God's chosen people. And he said it to the Pharisees who taught that they were the only shepherds because they were always a stumbling block using their rules and laws that drove people further from God than to him. And in so doing, they wearied themselves with rituals and practices that looked for a door that could not be found. Christ is the door. And that is the door that is open. And he is also the door that is shut. We see that door, when we talk about the door being shut, we see that door being shut to the five foolish virgins when we had read it many times before in Matthew 25, 10. And that door is shut to those who are not in Christ. So let's talk a little bit about the open door. Christ stated that he is the door. He is the door to our salvation, our safety, our security. He is the door of the church. And he is the door for those who seek him with all their heart. And who seek him in spirit and in truth. He is the open door to the sheep of God. Those whom he died to save. Those whom he draws to him. He is the open door where the sheep of God can enter in and be saved. Can enter in and out and find green pasture as we read in Psalm 23. He is the door of the sheepfold. In this door and through this door, Brother Frank, the sheep find security. 
They are safe. They are protected. None are lost. By Christ being the door, we have our first admission into the flock of God. This is what John 14, 6 says. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And that is our admission into the flock of God. He brings us in. By Christ being the open door, we go in and out, strengthened and walking up and down in his name. He is the open door for our passage. And Zechariah 10, 12 brings that to light. And I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, says the Lord. By Christ as the door, the sheep are at the end of time admitted into the heavenly kingdom. Matthew 25, 31 through 34 describes that event. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on the right hand, on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And this is a tremendous blessing for the sheep. Say, I'm a sheep. I'm a sheep. <laughs> what a blessed assurance we have in our relationship with our good shepherd the door, and the savior of the sheep. Let's look at the shut door. Christ is a door shut to keep out thieves and robbers and such as are not fit to be admitted. And again, we see that exemplified in Matthew 25 with the five foolish virgins. The door is shut to those who are unbelievers, who spurn God, who are not prepared. The shutting of the door is the securing of the house. And what greater security has the church of God? And I'm not speaking of the corporate church, but the spiritual church, the people of God, than the intervention of the Lord Jesus. And his wisdom and power and goodness between it, the church of God, and all its enemies. Jesus, he stands in between and protects the people of God from the enemies of God. By this open and shut door, God comes to his church. He visits it and he communicates himself to it. And then we read further another I am statement uh, in verse 11 from Christ. He declared, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Isn't that what John 3.16 confirms? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This good shepherd came and died for our sins. No one else can do that or will do that because no one else is qualified or authorized to do that. Christ died for the security of our salvation and our everlasting life. Those who masquerade as saviors and helpers will quickly flee when trouble comes. The hireling flees because he is a hireling, and he does not care for the sheep. Christ, the door, and the good shepherd cares for his sheep. And he sticks around forever and ever and ever. 
His goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives into eternity as we just read and we treasure those words in Psalm 23, the last verse. Christ laid down his life for his sheep. He not only ventured his life for them, and I'm going to say for us, because we who are saved are his sheep, but he actually deposited it and submitted to a necessity of dying for our redemption. The scripture tells us that he was obedient. He was steadfast even to the cross. We sheep were appointed for the slaughter. We sheep were appointed for the slaughter. That should have been us. Ready to be sacrificed. Because, but because of the goodness and mercy of God. We were ransomed with the blood of the shepherd. Jesus laid down his life, not only for the good of the sheep, but in their stead, in their place. And we have to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We read in the Old Testament about all the animal sacrifices. Thousands of sheep had been offered in sacrifice for their shepherds for sin offerings. But here in the New Testament, we see a surprising reverse. The shepherd is the one being sacrificed for the sheep. Sheep, let us give God some praise. Let's give God some praise, sheep. Praise the Lord. You know, I once saw a Thanksgiving cartoon where the cats were giving thanks that they were not the turkeys. <laughs> so we are giving God thanks for what he put in our place. As the sacrificial lamb who died for our sins, Jesus takes off the offense of the cross, which to many is a stone of stumbling. And we've read that in, 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 in um, Acts. And so I want us to just for a few minutes just consider this stone of stumbling and this Christ who's laying down himself, his life as the sacrificial lamb. The first consideration, Jesus laying down his life for the sheep was the condition, the performance of which entitled him to the honors and powers of his exalted state as we read in John 10 verse 17. Therefore does my father love me because I laid down my life that I might take it again. God accepts, loves, and approves and glorifies his son who has become a sacrifice for the chosen remnant. He authorized it. And not as the son of God because he is God and has been beloved of his father from eternity. But God loved him as the God man, as Emmanuel, God with us in the flesh. Christ's death was the purchase of his father's love, both to him and to us. Remember John 3.16. Second consideration. That is that Christ laying down his life was in order to him resuming it. He said, I lay down my life that I may receive it again. And this was the effect of his father's love and the first step of his exaltation, the fruit of that love. Because he was God's holy one, he must not see corruption. And the messianic Psalm 16 verse 10 sets this forth. God loved him too well to leave him in the grave, and this was revealed in the power of his resurrection. He was lifted up. He did not stay in the grave. Death could not hold him down. He triumphed over the grave. Romans 1, 4, and 5 says, and declared to be the son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship 
for obedience to the faith from all nations for his name. He laid down a vilified body by our sin that he might resume a glorified one, fit to ascend to the world of spirits. He laid down a life adapted to this world. Remember, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, but he resumed one adapted to the supernatural, like the corn of wheat, as we read in John 12, 24, that says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So the door, the good shepherd, had to be that. He had to die. He had to go down to come up to bring forth fruit. And the fruit are the sheep. We, the believers, the Christians, the children of God. The children of the Most High God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Number three. Christ was perfectly voluntary in his sufferings and death. We read in verse 18, no man takes it from me. But I lay it down for myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment I Received of my father. And so we see that Christ freely laid down his life. He delivered it as his own act and deed. And we see his power as Lord. Lord the Lord of life. Particularly his own life. Which he had in himself. He had power to keep his life against all the world. So that it could not be wrestled from him. Without his own consent. The Lord Jesus did not fall into the hands of his persecutors. Because he could not avoid it. Remember? Uh, these, the apostles were saying, you can call down 12,000 angels. They were expecting that he would have done that. He did not fall into the hands of his persecutors because he could not avoid it. He threw himself into their hands. Because his hour has come. Remember John 17, 1? The prayer in the upper room? Father, the hour has come. He had the power, the ability, and the authority to lay his life down and to take it up again. Jesus laid his life down. No one took it. He laid it down and he took it up. All authority in heaven and earth belongs to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. What a savior. Verse 4. Point 4. Let us see the grace of a loving savior and shepherd. Since none could demand his life of him by law or extort it by force, he laid it down of himself for our redemption. He offered himself to be the savior. Lo, here I come. He offered himself to be a sacrifice. Here I am. He was both the offerer and the offering. So that his laying down his life was his offering up himself. And he delighted to do the will of his father. Psalms 47 and 8 records, Lo, then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is written in my heart. And I wish to close with Acts 4.11. We talked about the, the door. We talked about the good shepherd. We saw the open door, the closed door, the shut door. We talked about the good shepherd. And now we're going to look at the stone. The stone which was set at north of the builders, which is become the head of the corner. Christ, the stone of stumbling or the rejected stone. He suffered, died, and was buried for our sins. He lay in the grave for three days. All seemed to be lost. 
But hallelujah, the prophecy of the Psalm 118 verse 22, the stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. The prophecy of Isaiah 28, 16, Therefore thus said the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believes shall not make haste. And the words of Christ himself in Matthew 21, 42. Did you never read in the scriptures, Jesus said? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. That's him. That's Christ. The head corner stone. You know, the cornerstone is the foundation of a building. We don't hear that word a lot, uh, but I'm sure in the building uh, industry, the architects, they have to be very careful about the cornerstone because it is the stone that keeps the building secure. There is a particular stone that is in place that everything else seems to hinge on. The cornerstone in the foundation of the believer's life is Christ. He is the anchor. He is the foundation. He is the base that keeps the spiritual building secure. 1 Peter 2.5 says, We are built up as lively stones, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. We are lively stones. We are the fruit of his ministry. We are built up to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So in addition to the cornerstone, we are the lively stones. We are coming out of his work, his finished work. We are the fruit of his ministry. And all of this is due to the chief cornerstone, Christ. No wonder the psalmist's pr prayer, and I like this, is that our daughters may be as cornerstones. This is a prayer in Psalm 144, 12. That our daughters, you want to pray for your daughters? You want to pray for your children? Look at Psalm 144, 12. It speaks about sons, but it also speaks about daughters. And it says that our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. That is purity. And a beautiful images of Christ. So we want not just ourselves, but we want our children, our daughters, to be in that image and, 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 and shape of Christ. Bearing fruit, beautiful fruit, pure fruit. We as lively stones, that's what we do. That's how we respond to the goodness and the mercy and the grace of God in our lives. To the sacrifice that Christ made for us. Not that we stay the same, but our lives are changed. We are hooked to this cornerstone. We are connected to the good shepherd. We are connected to that open door. Because he opens it for us. He allows it for us. And all of this is the Lord's doing. And it is to be marvelous in our eyes. And we should not miss the following warning. We read in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, Matthew 21, 44 and Luke 20, 18, they say the same thing. We read the warning that Jesus gave about the power of the stone. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it shall grind him to powder. 
And this should wake us up. This should wake us up. This Jesus is powerful. We don't take him for granted. We do not take him for granted. All authority is given to him in heaven and in earth. And when we are connected to him, we are humbly walking in the path that he sets forth for his sheep. And I'd like to close with Acts 4.12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. My brothers and sisters, this is our Savior. This is our Good Shepherd. This is our door. This is our chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, to God. Glory to God. Jesus is the cornerstone. Came for sinners to atone. Though rejected by his own, he became the cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone. When I am by sin oppressed, on the stone I am at rest. When the sea of truth are so he remains the cornerstone Jesus is the cornerstone till the breaking of the dawn till all footsteps cease to roam ever let this truth be known Jesus is the cornerstone Jesus is the cornerstone Jesus is the cornerstone Jesus is the cornerstone Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.